Um, welcome everybody today for coming to the Masters of Research Info session. Um, I'm Professor Jen Cornish. I'm, I'm Academic Director of the Graduate Research Academy, and it's a pleasure to have you all here with us today to talk about the Masters of Research. Right, let's move on. Before we start today, I would like to acknowledge country. So we would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which Macquarie University stands, the Wallamadigal clan of the Darug Nation, whose cultures and customs have nurtured and continue to nurture this land since the dream time. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. emerging. All right. So talking about the Masters of Research, um, what is the Masters of Research? I think a lot of people would ask, because as you may or may not know, Macquarie University is one of the few universities that offer the Master of Research, and we're actually the first university to offer it in Australia. So it's a two year research training program. Um, it, it can be considered as a pathway to our PhD studies because at Macquarie University, you do need to have Masters of Research equivalency to go into our three year PhD. But it's also a standalone degree. So the skills that you'll learn in your Masters of Research are actually really important for what employers are looking at um, or looking for. So it will actually boost your career and you can start off in employment at a higher level than if you don't have your Masters of Research. Okay, so it's basically a two year research training program. Now, why do it? It's a very interesting question. I have quite a few things here that would hopefully excite you about why you would wanna do a Masters of Research. So one of them is to ignite your research passion or actually to reignite your research passion. So some people may be coming in from, they've been away from study for a while and they wanna come in and actually look into something that they they were once passionate about and actually keep studying it now with a two-year degree. But otherwise, you could be someone who's done an undergraduate degree and you just want to start doing research and getting, you know, fast-tracking your research career. Okay, so it's a, it's a way for you to get really excited about research. And we have so many really good uh, researchers at Macquarie University that, um, and that would love to supervise your research. So please do look at our, our, our website for Find a Supervisor to see what kind of research we do actually offer. Now you will also achieve your research goals faster. So we've done, we've done work in this space now. We've looked at the data for how the MRES actually um, enhances your PhD completion rate. So people that have done the Masters of Research will actually, by four years in their PhD, 62% of Macquarie University students have actually finished their PhD. The national average, however, to finish your PhD in, in four years is 20%. So that's a fairly big difference. So the Masters of Research actually helps you to complete your PhD faster if that's what you intend to do. Also, the Masters of Research is really well known worldwide. So it's an international model, and that's one of the reasons why we brought it in in the first place is so it would be recognized worldwide. So it's a very important point as well. You can travel with this degree and work overseas, obviously. You can also engage with industry and international partners, and I'll talk a little bit more about those when we get to those sections later in today's presentation. Um, and also, um, we it will improve your improve your employability by having worked in industry or having that international relationship. But also, the, by doing your degree itself, um, it will help you to gain those transferable skills that most of the employers would like to see. But we also offer about 150 individual. Um, or specific workshops that you can do um, that will help to increase your research and professional skills. And of course, we have a generous um, stipend for you. And I'll talk a bit more about the scholarships that are available for you while you do your Masters of Research. So you'll be supported financially, which is great. And Macquarie University and the research community at Macquarie is a really amazing group. So you'll be part of that and you'll get to do lots of things with lots of fun people. So I think it's a really good idea to, to do a Masters of Research. I could be biased, but I think it's a good idea. Now, I forgot to mention at the start, if you do have particular questions that you would like to ask, we will have a small question and answer session at the end of this. Um, if it's faculty specific, I would keep it until you actually go out into the breakout rooms. But if it's general to administration of the degree and that kind of thing, please feel free to put your um, questions into the Q&A. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I forgot to say that earlier. And also, as you may or may not know, the event is being recorded. So I've said why you should do it. So let's proceed on how we can do it. So how do you actually, or what, what, is, what is this degree? It, it, there's both a, both a domestic form and also an international form. So the, the domestic form is actually called a Bachelor of Philosophy slash Master of Research. And that's because the first year is a, bachelor, a bachelor's degree, bachelor level degree, or sorry, year. 
So it's Bachelor of Philosophy, Master of Research. But for international candidates, it's actually just called Master of Research Year 1 and Year 2. Okay, so there's a little bit of difference there. Um, so if you're, if you're searching for it on our website and you're domestic, put in Bachelor of Philosophy, Master of Research. And if you're international, put Master of Research. Okay. So for Year 1, now we go more into the nuts and bolts of what the program is actually about. So in Year 1, it's basically getting, your, um, getting you embedded in research. So getting some discipline-specific training, but also learning some really important research um, techniques or research methods. So we have two main, and it, this is different across faculties as well, but the main things that, that are consistent across the faculties is that you will do a unit that's about research communications. Uh, you will do a unit that's on research frontiers, which is basically looking at new and upcoming events and um, techniques or uh, research actually that's happening in your field. So it's an, an important way to link in with your discipline. And then you have the option of electing uh, six faculty or department-based units. So some of those um, are core that the faculties want you to do, but most, most of them are electives. So it's basically the first year is all about training you in the discipline, but also with some research specific methodology, communication, so learning how to present, um, learning how to write, that kind of stuff to get your, get you, um, well, good, get you really good foundations for your second year that is actually all about writing the thesis and doing the research. So year two is focused on five core activities. And as, as I mentioned before, like we had but the different names for domestic and international, it's actually, you do exactly the same program, it's just called something different, okay, just to make that clear. So year two, we've got five core activities. You have Research Frontiers 2, which is again looking at more discipline specific, like journal article um, critiques, that kind of thing, Look, going to seminars, uh, making sure that you understand the field that you're in. You will need to do a literature review, which is more in, in more looking at the actual project that you're working on. You'll need to look at your research methods, so getting trained in research methodology that's specific for what you need to do for your degree, and also doing some research planning. It's always very important to plan what you're going to do for the year. You want to make sure that you've got that um, well sorted with your supervisor when you start out in your second year. And then you've got the thesis, which is about 20,000 words. Um, it's kind of in, in my my main thought process would be that you've got like an, an, a nice introduction and discussion, like bookending it, but in the middle you might have two experimental chapters, and depending on your field, so people may do it differently, but that's generally the size of what you'd be looking at. Okay. So how do we actually get you into these degrees or what do you need to get into these degrees? So for the Bachelor of Philosophy and Master of Research, if you want to come in in year one, so we do have the option of either coming in year one or year two, depending on your background. Okay, so I'm going to talk about year one now. So for year one, you need to have a bachelor or a higher award from a recognised institution. Macquarie graduates, especially from 2020 onwards, they need to have an overall WAM because we changed to a um, weighted average mark um, from 2020. So it's a WAM of 65 plus and a WAM of 70 plus at the third year level. Okay, so that's for Macquarie graduates. Before 2020, we'll use a GPA. So with all other applicants here, it says a minimum overall GPA of 4.38 on a seven-point scale and a GPA of 5.25 at the third year level. You'll need to give us a research proposal. Now, this is a really, it's not a big thing. So it's like two sentences. It's not onerous. But you need to give us an idea of the research area that you're interested in doing, in working in in your second year because we need to make sure that we've got a supervisor for you, okay? So it's important that you do the groundwork, make sure that kind of the area that you're interested in, we actually have the, the, um, the knowledge at Macquarie to actually help you with your second year. So please just give us a couple of sentences to let us know your area of, of interest. Um, and there are some disciplines that will have higher additional admission requirements, such as maths and I think cognitive science. So do have a look at those disciplines um, and you'll find out more about that in your faculty breakout rooms to see what else you might need to provide in order to get into um, that particular discipline. Okay, so that's for first year for Bachelor of Philosophy, Master of Research, year one. Okay, and for direct entry into year two, so if you're um, an honours, you've done honours, so a lot of people will have done a three-year bachelor and then they've done a one year of honours degree, 
that actually gives you recognition of prior learning to come straight into the second year. So people who have done an honours degree can actually come straight into the second year and do the thesis the thesis year. So you get a, a basically a master's within a year. So that's really good and hopefully a publication out of what the research is that you've done for that year. So it's, it's good for your CV to have those publications coming through quickly like that. Okay, so essentially you may be eligible for recognition of prior learning or RPL uh, for the first year and so direct admission into the second year of the program if you have that honours degree or a coursework master's is also something that will get you into the, the second year directly. For this one, however, if you are coming into the second year, you need to provide a more detailed research proposal. This is about uh, one page that describes your proposed project. Again, it's to make sure that we've got the right supervisory capability for you but also that we have the right facilities for you too, because there might be something or that it's feasible as well. So if you're saying you're going to do a whole lot of um, uh, CT scanning or something over, you know, it's, it's going to take three years, we need to say, hold on a minute, you might need to have a chat with your supervisor about whether that's possible. So it's important for us to see what you want to do to help get you um, in the right, help to get you off on the right foot. Okay. Now, as I said in the first couple of slides, the MRES was traditionally um, pitched as a pathway to a three-year PhD, which it still is. And as I gave you the stats before, it actually does help you um, give, get that foundational training that you need to do your PhD quite quickly and get out and get your career um, bolstered, if you like. Um, so if you are doing it for that reason, you need to get an overall mark of 75% or more in MRES year two to progress to the PhD. All right. And again, this uh, progressing to the PhD is also subject to supervisory availability. And if you want to have um, a scholarship while you're doing your PhD, you need to apply for it and they're competitively awarded. So not everybody gets one, but we are quite generous with how many we, we provide. So there's no harm in trying. Apply for a scholarship. That's what I would say. Now, if you wanted to go on to a PhD, but you actually got less than 75 um, as your mark for the MRES thesis, thesis year, that's okay. If you get 65% or, or 65, sorry, a mark of 65 or more in MRES year two, you can actually start in a Master's of Philosophy. And if you're doing quite well in your Master's of Philosophy, you can ask to transfer up to a PhD, um, but we'll have that conversation when you get to that point. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of that now. So there are, there are ways for you to progress if it's below 75. Now in the um, MRES, you actually have, we have a really fantastic strategic, um, strategic group that looks at industry and, and I'll talk in a minute also about in international engagement. So if you're interested in working in industry, we do have um, collaborations or types of collaborations that are available for year one or year two. This does also depend on, for year one, it depends on the faculty as to what they provide. And um, in year one, we do offer centrally, we offer MRES 7001, which is a, a PACE unit, which means it's basically a placement. Um, it can be out in, the, out in the community or out in industry, or it can be, it can be based on campus. But for, if you want industry experience, you'd ask for one that was actually in, in, um, based in an industry placement. Okay, so we have that in year one. Um, and in year two, we're looking to, to provide more industry internships, industry or organizational internships, doesn't have to be industry, it can be maybe you want to work at a, a government body or something like that. So industry is a very broad term that we use um, for basically working in stuff that's not academic. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. But also in year two, with your supervisors, um, they might have a lot of collaborations with industry. So do use that to your advantage to actually get to know industry and the people um, that are in those situations. So you can have a really wide network when you complete your degree. Okay, so the next one um, is exchange opportunities, and that's international exchange opportunities. So we have that available both in year one or year two. Um, so Macquarie has the has several partners, but the majority at the moment are focused in Germany and the Netherlands. So in Germany, we have five universities that we link in with, such as Heidelberg, Gießen, uh, Potsdam, Hamburg, and Göttingen. And in the Netherlands, I've got written there for you, University of Groningen. So if you're interested in um, having that international exchange um, experience, I would strongly suggest that you contact GR International. So gr.international at macquarie.edu.au. Rahel will help you to, to work out how we can go about getting you into that 
um, particular opportunity that you might want to explore. So do get in contact with Rahel. All right, so now we get on to the juicy stuff, which is the, the scholarships, which is good fun. So with our domestic students um, in year one for the BPhil, um, we have a, a fair few Commonwealth supported places and the scholarship that we provide in session one, you will get a $5,000 stipend if you have a GPA of six out of seven um, for non-Macquarie and a WAM of 80 plus for people that are Macquarie po um, post 2020. And in session two, if you keep up that good work and you still have a WAM of 80 plus at, at our institution, then you'll get another $5,000 stipend awarded to eligible full-time domestic students. Okay, so that's for domestics only. And for uh, year two, for, um, it's, a, it's basically a research training program or RTP funded program. So it has a, uh, a so basically you don't have to pay fees to do the second year um, and you can get a, a progression scholarship. So you can ask to apply for a one year stipend for high performing students. And it's now at $32,000 tax free um, a year. So that's a really nice, generous offer for you to keep doing something you're absolutely passionate about and you're getting paid for doing it at the same time. So you can't ask for more than that. All right, okay. So with our international students, um, they have to pay fees for both the first and the second year of the program. For the scholarships, again, you can apply for the scholarships and I'll give you the dates on those in, in a little while. So the scholarships are available in the second year, um, second year of the MRES to the highest performing students. They'll typically include a tuition fee offset so you won't need to pay those fees and also the, the stipend, the one-year stipend, that's the $32,000 tax-free. So it's um, in Australian dollars, obviously. And you can actually, um, there are some international agencies that may actually have scholarships available. So do look at our scholarships web page to see what you can link into for that. Okay. Now, we also have this really, really cool new scholarship. It's actually probably two years old now, and, and I'm sure someone will correct me later. <laughs> So it's our Road to Research Scholarships, and this is for um, domestic applicants, but also for internationals that are already onshore. So if you've just, just done, say, um, honours and you're an international student and you're onshore and you want to do your second year of your MRES, then go ahead and apply for a Road to Research Scholarship. So it's for domestics and also internationals that are onshore. So if you're offshore internationals, I'm sorry, this one's not for you. Okay, so... Um, you can apply for the road to research. Again, it's it's a competitive process and you'll receive, if you get the, the scholarship, you will get the stipend again at 32,000 and also the tuition fee offset for one year maximum. So I do have the domestic and international links here. Um, and I do have, later on, I have a QR code that will get you into the how to apply, which will get you into um, a lot of information on our website. So I know you can't write all that down right now, or you could take a photo. Um, and, and then you can link into those web, websites. Okay, so these are the deadlines for the applications. So with the BFIL um, MRES year one, we have the, so domestics up the top and international down the bottom. If you wanted to start next year, we need to have your applications in by the 30th of November for this year. And if you wanted to start in second semester um, for next year, and that's only for select disciplines. So select um, faculty. So you'll need to check with the, in your faculty breakout room if they offer se session two. They don't all do that. Not all faculties do that. Um, that one's due in 22nd of May, 2023. For the international, but if you want to start next year, you've already missed the boat, I'm afraid, because it takes a while for you to get your visas. So, um, so um, you can't apply for next semester. But if you are able to go to for second semester, that's due by the 15th of February. So again, I've got the how to apply thing over here. So you can scan my little dinosaur here and, and get onto our how to apply um, page. And it's also on the next page. So just take your time hovering your phone over that and get, get the information that you need. So with MRES year two, the application deadlines are here. So if you wanted to apply for MRES year two with a scholarship, which I strongly suggest you do, um, the session one for next year is due by the 31st of October this year. So you've got a month to get your stuff together. And that's for both the Macquarie Scholarship, but also the Road to Research. And again, so that's a hard deadline. You have to get it in by that date. If it's without scholarship, 
we still ask that you get it in by the 31st of October because it does take a while to process your applications. But that, that deadline's a little bit more flexible. Um, but just have a chat with us if you miss that by, you know, if you're, you know, around that date and you're a little bit late, just talk to us and see if it's if we can get it done in time. Um, for session two next year, again, it depends on the, the faculty, whether you can actually start in session two, but that's the 1st of April, 2023 for MQ Res and also the R2R. And again, without scholarship, the same, same date. For internationals, it's a little bit different. So you've already missed um, session one again for 2023, but we, um, so it's the 31st of July this year. So that's off already closed and that's for the offshore candidates. But if you're onshore, like I said before, you can apply for the, the R2R scholarship, which is due on the 31st of October, 2022. Um, and for session two, again, if the universe, if the faculty allows it, Offshore is due by the 15th of February, 2023. And if you're onshore for the R2R, it's the 1st of April, 2023, okay? So again, without the scholarships, it's the same date as the, as the offshore. Um, but again, there's a little bit of flexibility there if you're not applying for scholarships. So just let us know, reach out to us, okay? Now, um, before we go on to Oren, I will just, I'll come back to this slide here and I'll just ask Alex, um, have we got any questions that we need to be answering, please? Hi, Jen. Um, we're getting lots and lots of questions, um, okay. a, lot, <laughs> a lot that I'm having a bit of trouble keeping up at the moment. So if I don't get to your question, um, please don't worry. I'll, I'll make a note of them and we'll be sure to answer them either in the breakout rooms or um, I will get back to you after the session. Um, they are mainly about sort of more specific scholarship questions, application questions, um, credit for previous study, um, GPAs. So um, the, I'm answering as many of, of them as I can, um, but they are sort of quite specific to okay. um, particular cases. So um, I, I am getting to them, but I don't think there's anything really um, that, um we need you to address at the moment Jen okay thank you that was Alex Loveday so thank you Alex <laughs> all right so Oren I'm happy to hand over to you now to to um speak about your Aboriginal academic engagement team at Wollonga Maru uh, awesome thanks Jen and uh hi everybody uh I'm Oren Salt I'm a staff member of Wollonga Maru which is the Indigenous Centre here at Macquarie University our main role is to help Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students achieve their academic goals through a holistic approach that recognises cultural differences and values diversity of cultural backgrounds and experiences. We engage with teams throughout the university to ensure our students are getting up-to-date information for whatever questions they may have, while also providing them the knowledge and access to student services, as well as advice on interacting with the services Wollongamaroo itself runs. These services include day-to-day -day advice, tailored inductions, individualized degree planning, subject-specific and general academic tutoring, academic workshops, and enrollment support. Our student engagement coordinators assist with student well-being, referrals to medical services, student well-being and other external well-being services, uh, accommodation, scholarships, employment opportunities, time management and study planning, Centrelink and AB study support, and we also provide numerous cultural activities for you to join throughout the year. Uh, these include, but are not limited to, uh, weekly community lunches to engage with both staff and other students, uh, discovering identity workshops, yarn ups, traditional weaving and earring making, uh, social sports, competing in the Indi Indigenous Nationals competition, uh, camps and trips to the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies in Canberra. Um, the most widely used support service we provide our students is the Wallamai Tutorial Program, which is a Commonwealth funded program designed to close the gap that exists between the educational outcomes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and other Australians in tertiary education. The program provides free tutoring for Indigenous students. And as a HDR student, there's also the opportunity for you to apply to tutor our undergraduates through this program and get paid for your time. 
Uh, we're currently looking for more tutors and this is open to anyone, not just Indigenous students. So if you have the capacity to, it's a great way to supplement your income while also assisting our, uh, our students. Uh, that website is just below my name for anyone interested in applying. Uh, in terms of the scholarships we provide HDR students, the one I would recommend uh, all Indigenous students to apply for during their postgraduate studies would be the Indigenous Macquarie University Research Excellence Scholarship. Uh, this is open to any Indigenous Australian in a postgraduate research degree, which is the Bachelor of Philosophy, Master of Research, uh, Master of Philosophy and Doctor of Philosophy. Uh, there are no requirements for your research to be in a particular field either. Uh, the aim of the scholarship is to encourage and increase the number of Indigenous Australians undertaking postgraduate research study with a view to, uh, to increase the number of Indigenous Australian academic staff. The program provides recipients with the opportunity to access mentoring from academic and professional staff and fellow postgraduate students, advanced research preparation and skills development, career development and opportunity, and the opportunity to present your research work at local, regional and national conferences. Uh, we recently sent a number of our HDR students to WIPSI, which is the World Indigenous Peoples Conference on Education. Uh, and this was held in Adelaide this year and our students had the opportunity to present. Um, earlier this year, a number of our graduate researchers also attended the Center for Global Indigenous Futures Writing Retreat. Uh, lastly, with the uh, Indigenous Research Scholarship, uh, much like the domestic scholarship round, it is tax-free. So it's a great way to relieve uh, financial burden while you study. Um, if anybody would like to have a further yarn about Willang Maru and the support structures we provide, please feel free to contact us at ArcWM at mq.edu.au, which is also on the slide. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Thank you so much, Oren. I really appreciate it. I'd love to have a yarn with you. <laughs> Been a while. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So um, now, guys, we're going to talk, going to go into our faculty breakout rooms. So I know that when you registered, you would have, um, you would have suggested a particular faculty that you may have wanted to go into the, to have more discussions with. Now, we're going to put the links up again, just in case when you see what's in each faculty, you change your mind as to where you might want to be. But essentially, we've got um, different Zoom links for each of these faculties, which we'll show you in a minute. And Alex will put them in the chat for you, um, for you to decide where you might want to go to to have a discussion with, the, with our EMRES directors and liaison officers. So we have four main faculties. We have the Faculty of Arts, the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences, the Faculty of Science and Engineering, and Macquarie Business School. So the first up that we're going to um, show the information for, and just check the chat, because Alex will put this in there for you. So it's the Faculty of Arts, and the Zoom link is there, as I said, Alex will put it in the chat. In the Faculty of Arts, we have a number of um, departments. So there's the Macquarie School of Education. We have History and Archaeology. There's Indigenous Studies, Macquarie Law School, Media, Communications, Creative Arts, Language and Literature, otherwise known as McCall, Philosophy, Security Studies and Criminology, and Macquarie School of Social Sciences. So if this sounds like the, the breakout room that you want, please use this particular link to get you into that room. So you'll be meeting with our MRES director, who is Kirsten Mills, and also our liaison officer, who is Beppy Keane. So um, I'm happy to move on to the next one then. So the next one is the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Human Sciences. And this faculty holds chiropractic, health sciences, linguistics, the School of Psychological Sciences, the Australian Institute of Health Innovation and Macquarie Medical School. So if you're interested in like biomedical science and uh, that kind of thing here, go for this particular link. You'll be meeting with um, Dr. Jen Rowland, who is the MRS director, but also Viviana Bong, who is our liaison, our liaison officer. Okay, so that, Link is now in the chat, I believe. I can't see the chat, so <laughs> we'll go ahead. Yep, yeah, it's all, all right. there, Jen. Okay. Thank you, mate. All right, the next one is Faculty of Science and Engineering. So for this one, you'd be looking at computing, engineering, mathematical and physical sciences. Um, so that's including astronomy and things like that. Um, natural sciences, which has biology in it, 
and molecular sciences and also applied bioscience. Okay, so for those departments, please use this particular link and you'll be meeting with um, Associate Professor Mohsen Asadnia, who is our EMRES director, and also Jane Yang, who is our liaison coordinator. You know, liaison officer, whatever. Okay, it's all good. <laughs> Sorry. And then we've got our business school. Okay, so Macquarie Business School. This, if you want to link into this particular breakout room, this is for accounting and corporate governance. We have actuarial studies and business analytics. We have applied finance, economics, management, and marketing. So please use that particular Zoom link if you would like to go out to that particular um, breakout room. Okay, so with that, I'm assuming that you'll all be hopping off to those breakout rooms. We, we will be staying online for a little bit longer. So if you have any trouble, we will be here to help you. Um, so um, enjoy the breakout rooms. And thank you very much, faculties, for participating and for Alex, Love, Dave and Yoli for helping us set this up. And also Oren, thank you very much. Um, so I'll just keep the slide here for a while and um, we'll see how we go. Good luck, guys. I hope to see you next year or the year after. <laughs>